Hello everyone, good evening and welcome back to another live stream. Thank you everyone who's been waiting for me. We had today a uh, delay our live stream by about half an hour tonight. Excuse me for that. I know I don't always do it at 10, but it's been usually at 10 lately. But we had a bit of a backlog of uh, videos, really. I can see that we're live now. All of you can hear me. We usually have to wait like around uh, 20 seconds uh, before we start. But good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another live stream. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for uh, everyone who's been waiting for me. And thank you for everyone joining us as and when. I posted a couple of videos earlier on about... Uh, Number one of them was very interesting, by the way. One of them was about a guy, an Israeli guy who was one of the survivors of the um, 7th of October Israeli massacre in the Nova Festival. If you haven't watch these videos because I speak in detail about uh, exactly what happened, but I keep it brief so I don't take obviously too much of your time. But obviously these live streams allow us to elaborate and obviously take questions and listen to your feedback as well and give you some platform. But this man raised a couple of very interesting things. One of them, it's the first time that I noticed it, by the way. Do you know what it is? Some people that Israel massacred on the 7th of October, Israelis, in case this is the first time that you hear this, the normal mainstream media narrative is that Hamas massacred Israelis, Israeli civilians on the 7th of October. The truth is from evidence coming from Israel, Israeli people who survived the 7th of October cameras from Israeli helicopters, cameras from Israeli citizens in kibbutzes, in Israeli towns that were attacked on the 7th of October. They showed Israeli helicopters, Israeli tanks shooting at people. One of those massacres was obviously the Nova Festival massacre. I published a video during the early days of this genocide with a shot from an Israeli helicopter shooting. Obviously, as time went by, more and more revelations, more and more people came forward and started revealing these massacres. Firstly, it was the people who survived it, the people who were kidnapped on the day, saying how Israel shot them constantly, everywhere they were. Then you've had Israeli citizens in the kibbutzes, obviously, saying the Israelis were killed due to crossfire, Israeli civilians, although Hamas and the Palestinian resistance were reassuring them, and they were taken aback by that, surprised some of them. Then you had people in the Israeli army who started speaking up. So over a month ago, Israeli pilots revealed that they had no command no orders were given to them. I obviously spoke about it at the time because I speak about almost everything. Where they said they were in a WhatsApp group together deciding which areas to shoot and which areas not to shoot. However, that narrative, even if it was correct for a very limited amount of time in a particular situation, was either debunked or added by further evidence from the latest Israeli pilot who came forward and gave his version. What was his version? His version was that we received orders to shoot indiscriminately on every single vehicle heading from Israeli kibbutzes to Gaza. 
that particular pilot confirmed that he received orders to shoot on every vehicle, completely shoot them out, going from kibbutz near Oz to Gaza. Okay, regardless. Remember that, regardless. And there was a confirmed case of an Israeli death that he spoke about. He confirmed. Okay, what does this tell us? This tells us that Israel shot indiscriminately. Hannibal Directive. Implemented. Okay. What did this guy reveal? I didn't speak about this particularly in the video. I just put it on the title and I spoke about the fact that Israel, the people who survived the 7th of October, Nova Festival, 50 of them committed suicide. Committed suicide. Again, suspicious. What was this man saying? This man said that there's forced hospitalizations. What does this mean, forced hospitalizations? You're talking about people who are partying. Partying and then survived. And then they left. Why are they forcibly hospitalized? Well, they're forcibly hospitalized because they are witnesses to what happened. And many of them are likely to speak up as to what happened, like the other Israelis who spoke about what happened. Israel, in effect, is kidnapping these people, forcing them into, or they call it hospitals, it could be asylums as far as we know, really. But they stated forced hospitalizations. Why? Clearly, these people, they have information that the Israeli government doesn't want to reveal. 50 of them committing suicide. So where were the people who committed suicide? In the hospital? How is it possible for them to commit suicide in hospital? Forced hospitalization. Are they not monitored? If they committed it outside of the hospital, why were they not treated? Did you not care about the people who went through all of that? Again, uh, Terry Len Nelson, by the way, I'll address this while uh, I'm talking. You're asking, so people who survived October the 7th committed suicide? Yes, survived particularly the Nova Festival when Israel was shooting at everyone indiscriminately. Hamas fighters who invaded Israel and Israelis who were at the scene and then sold the narrative that Hamas massacred all of these people. Regardless of the evidence that was published by Israel, by Israelis and even published in Israeli media and statements about the fact that they were shot by Israel, alongside other evidence about the scale of the damage, especially with the vehicles of these people. What did that show? You remember the lines of vehicles that were, were completely burnt to smithereens, right? H how were they shot in that manner? How comes many of these cars had bullets and damage from above? What was this from? Where, where did that come from? That came from the Israeli Apaches. Similarly to the evidence from the kibbutzes with the Israeli tank shellings on people's houses where they suspected Hamas members were with Israelis, disregarding Israelis. So that's yet another very important thing that's uh, just come up. That's also worth potentially having uh, another separate video about. Then I also uh, spoke about um, Hezbollah's massive attack. Again, these videos go ahead and watch them after this live stream so, I can, so you can see all of the details. They're not too long. It won't take uh, too much of your time. Then we had Hezbollah and a uh, very sophisticated attack about uh, on a command surveillance location in Israel. Surveillance command center in the western part of the Galilee 
where they had a UAV that had explosives and a camera landing and exploding. Everyone, everyone in the Israeli on the Israeli side fell casualties. Israel said six were severely wounded. Again, Hezbollah is having very sophisticated and targeted attacks, and the Iron Dome isn't able uh, to intercept anything. And obviously Israel is trying to, particularly Benjamin Netanyahu now, now that he's getting the cold shoulder about an attack in Iran, he's trying to delay everything as much as possible, including the negotiations. Now he's causing more frictions with the Qataris to try and completely hinder any sort of progress with the negotiations and delay them. To, and we already have Israeli people from the negotiating delegation saying that if we continue down this path, we're likely to have one year of negotiations. Why one year of negotiations? Because Benjamin Netanyahu would buy more time. He was hoping that with his escalation with Iran, that more and more people will join him. Clearly, they're not. Including, including, by the looks of it, Britain. Not to say that their uh, position is um, in any way, shape, or form less shameful. Leads us to the main topic that I want to talk to you about, and then I'll obviously address uh, your comments and questions. David Cameron. David Cameron, he went to Israel. He went to Israel. Why? To show solidarity. To show solidarity with the uh, genocidal satanic death cult. People share the same views of supremacy, of uh, arrogance, neo-colonialism. They show each other sympathy. He didn't go to Gaza to show sympathy after 33,000 people were slaughtered. Babies, children, women. No need for that. But he went to Israel, the country that's committing this genocide. He went with the German foreign minister, keen, keen on showing solidarity with Israel. <clears throat> and the reason I said uh, Ziogate, worse than Piggate, if you if if you are not familiar with Piggate, go up and 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 read about it. David Cameron, what he was up to with his mates before becoming prime ministers. Ziogate, why? Because it's published. It's published. They admit. They admit what they do in front of everyone. Shameless. No shame whatsoever. He went to Israel and he met with Benjamin Netanyahu. He said the situation, he came up with statements for the media afterwards to obviously, you know, speak and show the level of solidarity with Israel. He said the situation is very concerning and it's right to show solidarity with Israel. It's right to show solidarity with Israel. We have made our views clear about what should happen next, but it's clear the Israelis are making a decision to act. So now you don't even have Britain. So we were questioning who is going to have this coalition with Israel to go and fight Iran. Britain, France, Germany. Clearly none of them. Because if he's saying we made our views clear to the Israelis what should happen next, but Israel is making a decision to act, and that was later confirmed by Benjamin Netanyahu, they're advising Israel how to act. No condemnation, not Israel, don't escalate, not you're being reckless, none of that. None of that tone reserved to the Palestinian resistance, the Iranian retaliation, perfectly legal retaliation, similarly to the Palestinian resistance, per perfectly legal 
resistance no he is speaking to israel we hope they do so in a way that does as little to escalate this as possible and in a way that as i said yesterday is smart as well as tough but the real need is to refocus back on hamas back on the hostages back in getting aid and back on getting uh you know resolving the conflict in gaza and looking at the conflict in gaza not don't escalate nothing firm not go uh, not don't actually go and wreak havoc and put the whole region in flames that will have a devastating effect on the global economy, on the people in the region, more lives being lost, a potential escalation to World War III because you have Russia with an alliance with uh, Iran. N none of that. We hope they do so in a way to do as little as possible to escalate and in a way that is smart as well as tough. Wow. Can't you say that to Hamas? Why don't you say that to the people of Gaza who are under occupation, under a regime of supremacist ethnocracy, under constant violence? People who are expelled from their homes. People who are living under blockade. On the 6th of October, 2023, anyone, till now really, under the age of 17, most of them, the vast majority of them, haven't seen anything, anything, apart from Gaza, because there's a blockade. Most of them relied on foreign aid. Most of them didn't know where their next meal is coming from. Most of them lived in houses that are risky, hazardous to their health. But no, David Cameron wouldn't go and tell them, okay, you, you, you're entitled to hit back this supremacist, violent aggressor. No, he demonizes them. It's as if you're seeing a woman who has been... Um, abused for all of her life, beaten and, and, and raped and what have you. And going to tell her, look, don't retaliate against the rapist, against the man who abused you for all of these years. Don't do that. Just not don't do that. You're a terrorist <laughs> for even thinking that. Imagine calling a woman a terrorist for slapping a rapist. That's the Palestinian case for you. A land that's been raped for 75 years in front of everyone. And whenever it decides to retaliate, they label her. They label the woman that's been abused and raped for 75 years. And then he continued to bang on about uh, Iran, new sanctions on Iran, on the IRGC. And he continued, I think there's more we can do to show a united front. Malign activity in the region, backing Hamas, backing Hezbollah, backing the Houthis. They need to be given a clear and unequivocal message by the G7. And I hope that will happen in the meeting. So again, I mean, Israel bombs, Israel kills innocent people, destroys everything. There are no, hardly anything. Just don't escalate. Collateral damage. You have a right to retaliate. They didn't even condemn Israel deliberately, knowingly, murdering their own citizens, providing aid to Gaza. All of whom were in the armed forces as well. Not to say that they should sympathize only with their own people. But what is your position exactly? Where is your position coming from? 
who who are you with exactly are you are you the prime are you the foreign minister of uh, the uk or are you the spokesperson of zionism clearly these people serve the zionists that's what they serve they don't even serve their own countries they're careless of their own countries we've said that many times and we also warned people in the early days people were justifying this uh, genocide said beware if you're justifying the act against other people you're justifying the act altogether and if it's not for those people if it's not the palestinian people it could be someone else as in when the time suits based on any excuse because if the excuse is illegal irrational wrong and flawed anyway then they can implement that excuse on anyone else so if you're saying that the palestinian resistance is illegitimate anyone fighting israel is bad and all of this justification for this criminal genocidal satanic death cult regime in israel then you can come a day can come and you will say oh hold on a second a group of people in this country or all people or some people they're also like them and then if you're one of the people actually supporting it well what would you want other people to say when when that's implemented against you and your family and your city sympathize with you why why should anyone sympathize with you so um, again obviously david cameron proving again that he's a clown that he's a zionist slave that he doesn't serve the interest of his own country of his own people he doesn't serve anything really but his masters in zion and he can get away with it but to some people it's normal you know him going to a genocide state showing solidarity saying it's right to show solidarity what was the right to show solidarity for hitler as well You were talking about the same people with the same mindset. They're the same people who used to justify the apartheid in South Africa. They supported it to the last second. Then when everything went away, it's, it's as if that history and that part didn't exist. They deny it. And the same thing is going to happen. When the supremacist, when the supremacist, Zionist, violent occupation and they're going to look back and they're going to hope that this part of history was completely erased the same people that used to consider nelson mandela a terrorist and are now considering the palestinian resistance terrorism this is what's going to happen to them they're going to go back hoping that somehow this will be erased from the pages of the history books or the history videos nowadays or the history social media but people will remember their positions let me now uh, reach your comments and open the space up for you to participate firstly big thanks to blank stairs and uh, husna hassan thank you so much for your uh, supers i really appreciate that let's see where we are go from the beginning i'll try not to miss anything but um excuse me if i do because i don't uh, sometimes it goes up and down really grandma k thank you for all you do more children were shot by quadcopters and settler attacks 
my heart is broken. I feel helpless. And why do Palestinians not count in this world? How do you stay uplifted? Well, you're dealing with a criminal entity that's being supported by a global criminal network, really, of uh, people in power. And that's not abnormal for them. They've been committing that for 75 years. There's nothing new. The Palestinians do count, of course they do, but they don't count to the criminal entities. They don't count to the genocidal Zionists. They don't count to them. Why? Because that's their belief. They have a profound belief and faith that they are of a superior entity and superior race and that these other people are below them. Neo-colonial supremacy, supremacy, Islamophobia, of course. So they don't value them the same way. And also, it stretches beyond that. It goes to much deeper meanings. That's why we say it's not only that, but that's a very big part of it. Because when it comes to people, from these same countries who are supporting Israel, their own population, if something happens to them done by Israel, they're killed, they're shot, they're slaughtered, they're targeted, it's as if nothing happened. Slaves to the Zionists, because Zionism infiltrated so many countries, Zionist lobbies all across. APAC and the US, here you have them Hidden, although they were revealed in many investigations, really. There was one investigation about how Zionism in Israel undermines British democracy by buying politicians, how, spread, how widespread they are in mainstream media, how much power they have, and they're being supported. Then how do you stay uplifted? I think that's a question for the people of Gaza, really. How are they staying like that? It's their faith. That's number one, their faith and their resilience. That's what keeps them going. But obviously, you always need to const constantly reveal what this criminal entity is doing. Let's go to the top and check all of the details here. FP, I think you're commenting about the forced hospitalizations of Israelis. You're saying these people are probably playing them false videos to confuse them into believing the videos are right and their memories are wrong. I wouldn't be surprised of anything. But that's the thing you need to understand here. This method, this playing videos to confuse people, to believe something else, that's done on a mass scale. That's what mainstream media does. Mass manipulation. Mass psychological control. Mass lies. So they're doing it at a global scale not just these people. With these people, they will go an extra mile to manipulate everything so that if they are released, they're not really assassinated because these are so supposed suicides, right? Well, how, how would I know that they're not give, giving them something to kill them? H how can anyone prove that? They can say they were on medication or whatever and 50 suicides. Forced hospitalizations of all of these people in the festival, particularly, by the way, because this man was speaking about the Nova Festival. Why are they in forced hospitalizations? W what are they going through exactly? What are they hiding from us? Clearly, many things, including potential uh, tests, really, and, and mass brainwashing. In that only Israel has this Hannibal rule. Well, they're the only ones who declare it and name it as a Hannibal directive. 
and practice it. Although, by the way, legally they claim that they uh, took it away, but they always have a back route to implement it. And people within the Israeli army, they know that it still exists because they're told that ex it exists, really. But you wouldn't see any army saying that, by the way. I'm going to kill my own soldiers just because uh, I don't want my enemy to use them as leverage. What kind of a nation is that? That's why we repeat Israel doesn't care about Israelis as well. Israel is a Zionist, neo-colonialist, expansionist entity. It treats its people as cannon fodder. Kills them for nothing. People are born brainwashed you know, planted hate in their brains and souls and racism and supremacy to view other human beings, other fellow human beings as a lesser individual or a lesser being. Gallant said, we view them as human animals. Do we need more evidence than that? Imagine one, one <laughs> imagine a Palestinian said that all Israelis are human animals. And I've been posting videos now for almost all of this genocide and distinguish between obviously uh, Zionists and Jews and Israelis and Semites, of course. But what if you have the defense minister saying that just before he went on a genocide, wasn't that enough of a warning for you to go and stop these maniacs at the time? No, because you're the same. You're the same. You share the same views. And when you talk about other countries, other European countries or the U.S., you're talking about countries with a rich history of colonization, mass enslavement, far bigger genocides than Israel. What Israel's doing in Gaza now is a child's play. <laughs> what, in comparison to the U.S., to the U.K., to France, to other European countries? Child's play. These people killed millions across the world. So, of course, they'll sympathize with Israel. But it's very well known in Israel, the Hannibal Directive, of course. Although they said it's no longer kind of legal, but they always have a way around it. Like, for example, you know you have these literal executions in front of you in the West Bank and in Gaza and in the Israel. The Israeli Supreme Court banned field executions. But there was a small clause that says, unless you're under threat. Why? Because Israel used to storm into people's houses that, that were wanted for Israel and shoot them while they're sleeping. They still did the same thing. But the only difference is they said that they posed a threat because they looked at them. So they pose the threat. Do you understand? And they do the same thing with Israeli soldiers. And it's well known. And it happened many times during uh, this genocide and when they were operating in Gaza. Taylor Samhuri, Mahmoud talk about the Israeli settlers fleeing the airport after the Iranian retaliation strikes on Israeli air bases and show how Iran proved the rules of international law. Yeah, I spoke about that. So I already spoke about that. Obviously, you have massive numbers of Israelis fleeing. And Iran definitely played by the book. They played everything. All of their action was within international law. It was a retaliation, a perfectly legal retaliation to an aggressive, illegal terrorist act from Israel targeting what is considered their own soil. It was very cleverly implemented as well. They did all of these drones, drone attacks and they did them in waves to confuse and exhaust the air defense systems and the missiles that they intended to land, landed and destroyed. 
That's why Israel worked really hard to cover everything up. And then they showed you this hole, 50, 60 centimeter hole in the ground, dug up with the soil next to it. Small mouth. And I said in that video, I didn't know that the Iranian missiles can land and then dig and then put the soil next to the hole. One, that's, that's an unprecedented feature for a missile. So the missile would land, right? Land like this uh, SpaceX, right? Like Elon Musk's uh, rockets. They land like this, fall down, release a shovel, and take the soil out, put it next to it, and then remove itself so that it doesn't have any debris, any missile parts, so it'll keep everything in Israel clean. And they think they can fool people with that. But you still have deniers, right? You still have the, <laughs> I call them the attack deniers. Oh no, it's all fabricated. It was all this and all that. Iran wouldn't do that, you know, to hide their uh, awful, shameful positions and lack of action and immorality. No, Iran can't do that. Of course they can, they did. You just don't want to admit it. There was a massive campaign immediately, by the way, simultaneously with the attack to undermine everything. And although we covered everything from the beginning to the end, you still have people who don't believe that. What can I do for you? Some people are lost case, not my problem. Blank stairs, you're asking if uh, Israel has been attacking in Iran in the last few days. I haven't heard that they attacked Iran. And Iran told them, if you attack, we'll, uh, we'll respond tenfold. Clearly, they haven't. Unless they did some, I don't know, proxy attack or whatever. But that wasn't reported, really. And be careful, because sometimes, by the way, with social media accounts, even on YouTube, sometimes people will publish certain images and certain videos that are from a few years back and say, oh, that's happening now. And everyone needs to be very careful about that, as long as it's not verified by like anyone, you know, at least known or something, an official. And then you can obviously judge and analyze and see who else published it, etc. Then it could be suspicious, but I'm 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 not entirely sure uh, where where that came from exactly. Talal Mansour, in the past 24 hours, we've seen a serious escalation in the north of Israel targeting the Iron Dome. Yes, Hezbollah targeted. Hezbollah targeted. Iron Dome locations where they're based and a surveillance command base in uh, the western part of Galilee with a direct hit. And they've been going back and forth, so it's not stopping yet. Shazad, thank you so much, brother. Uh, Jihad al aidi is Israel planning to invade central Gaza, Deir al-Balah, and Maghazi area? Yeah, they had a plan. You see, they have so many plans. Firstly, Netanyahu has been talking about Rafah for a very long time. Now that they're slightly backtracking on Rafah, they started saying that we want to attack the central provinces again and Rafah to kind of put Rafah and the end queue really. A way to kind of deviate or try and completely cancel the Rafah operation because of the potential repercussions and implications. The person who is strongly saying these things is Benny Gantz. He's saying we're going to go back to Khan Yunus, we're going to go back to 
central Gaza and we're going to operate in Deir al balah What are you going to do there? And what do you mean operate? Targeted attacks like this uh, special forces attack that you got completely defeated in? What are you going to do? You've been there for half a year and got defeated by the Palestinian resistance. What are you going to do afterwards? You just withdrew your forces, most of your fighting forces. There's just a brigade called Nahal Brigade, part of the 126 Division. That's there for policing, apart from that limited operations and limited air operations. By, but by withdrawing your troops, you're effectively saying, I'm giving Hamas breathing space. Because the whole excuse you were selling us before is we need to keep up the pressure. We don't want to give them breathing space. We don't want to move our forces so they don't reorganize on top of the ground. But they think they can lie and say these statements and people will just buy it again. You're going against everything that you said. Most likely for very specific reasons. Number one, because the Palestinian resistance is imposing its conditions on you. Prerequisites to reaching a deal or an implementation of certain actions during the negotiation process so they so that they are not deemed as part of the deal like the withdrawal people people going back to the north getting more aid and prisoners being released all of that happened in the last week why is israel doing it it is most likely because, again, we can't completely say that it is the reason because no one declared it. But by observing what's happening, clearly something's happening with the negotiations. And Israel is also facing pressure from the U.S. to submit, to climb down the ladder. But it was Hamas mainly, really, mainly the Palestinian resistance telling them, OK, you want to continue, you want to go ahead, start doing one, two, three, four. And then we will continue and go ahead. And Israel, by doing these acts now, when the deal comes and other things happen that Israel will declare, well, they will say, we just agreed to this, but we didn't do anything else. Well, yeah, because you did them now. Do you understand what they're doing? But they would sell it to their own population because they care a lot about the Israeli public opinion. They will tell them, Oh, yes, here's the deal with Hamas, but we only agreed to exchange prisoners and we didn't do anything on the ground. Everything is still the same. But what's the same? The same that is changing now. The same, which means you withdrew all of your fighting force. You allowed people to the northern part of Gaza. You got aid into the northern part of Gaza. And you're going ahead still with what the Palestinians want, but not declaring it. Do you understand? But they'll sell it to the Israeli population as if we didn't climb down the ladder, we stuck to our grounds and we still have the freedom to operate. And this is just a confirmation that's temporary and what have you, like they did before. Like if any of you observed the 2008-2009 war in Gaza, so the same thing happened. It started off with we we're going to eliminate Hamas. And Hamas were much less equipped at the time, much less organized and militarily capable, by, but not by any means less brave and confrontational when it comes to the terrorist state of Israel. And then, slowly but surely, Israel started saying, oh no, the aim is to weaken them militarily. This is what we'll do. And they ended the war. In the 2014 war, Hamas imposed further conditions on Israel, which included Israel withdrawing back to Israeli territories, giving back the buffer zone area so that Hamas could be literally next to Israel, Open up, opening up the fishing space, allowing more aid in, 
many things that were imposed by the Palestinian resistance. Why? Because of their power and them fighting with Israel. Why? Because Israel only understands the language of force. This is what they proved ever since their establishment. There is no negotiating with them. There's no talking with them. The Palestinian Authority in the West Bank has been talking with them for 31 years now. What did they gain? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Millions in bribes. So they're living lush, going back and forth by approval from Israel, of course. But what did the average Palestinian people get? Further expansion, further humiliation, more checkpoints, more field executions, more administrative detention, more of every bad thing you can imagine. Stealing, burning crops, everything, settler attacks, you, every single thing you could think of. But with the people who resisted Israel, they got what they wanted. Egypt got Sinai, Lebanon got South Lebanon. Hamas got Gaza. Obviously now there's this genocide, but before that. So uh, th that's how they operate. That's how they operate. John Doe, thank you so much. You're saying Eid Mubarak Mahmoud, same to you. Did Iran hurt Israel? Did Saudi Arabia actually help? How Morocco, how is Morocco viewed politically and humanitarian wide? I feel like Palestinians only have Allah and a few men in Yemen, Lebanon, Iraq, and Syria. I'll start with the last point. They only have Allah. That's it. And a few men here and there, and good, honorable people across the globe who support them and love them and pray for them all across the world from many religions and many races and many backgrounds. That's with the last point. The first point, did Iran hurt Israel badly? And by saying badly, you don't necessarily translate that as Israel does. Destruction of civil buildings and killing innocent people, no. Iran did that by number one, creating a new equation by conducting a historical attack, an unprecedented successful attack in numbers, in quality, in quantity, the timing. They managed to get through the most, right, arguably, but the most sophisticated air defense systems of five countries five countries, the US, Britain, France, Saudi Arabia, hold on, six, Jordan and Israel. That's if you exclude the UAE. They managed to get through six of the best air defense systems that Western powers have and landed where they wanted. So they will tell you we intercepted 99%. Firstly, that's a lie. Secondly, they intercepted a lot, absolutely. Didn't Iran know that? Didn't Iran know that there's all of this interception and uh, obstacles and hurdles along the way? They timed everything perfectly. They calculated everything perfectly. First wave drones, second waves, other drones, third phase, the missiles that they want to hit. And they hit. Why? Because the drones, uh, they sucked up all of the energy from these air defense systems of Jordan, France, Britain, every, imagine the shame, shameful situation. And then they reached Israel and they landed, the last ones, perfectly executed against a military base, a valid target, in accordance to international law. That's a country that respects itself. That's a country that respects international law, unlike Israel. Careless, completely careless international law, always goes against everything, and is a child murdering state. Then, too, did Saudi Arabia actually help? That was reported that Saudi Arabia actually helped, but didn't confirm that they did help. But we most likely assume that they did, because if Jordan did help, Saudi Arabia probably most likely would. And obviously, look at the people who tried to undermine it. Saudi Arabia was one of them. 
their mainstream media was ridiculing whatever mm-hmm. happened. And they started, some of them started to hail Israel. Oh, well done for intercepting, showed how uh, incapable Iran is. How is Morocco viewed politically and uh, humanitarian? Well, I love Morocco personally. I have very good Moroccan friends. Love Morocco and the uh, Moroccan people. Um, and you feel like, yeah, we, we got to that. The Palestinian people have Allah and a few men in Yemen, Lebanon, and Syria. Yeah. And obviously everyone around the world who supports and uh, prays for them and um, is active, really. Philip Kuz, uh, tonight I found out about the Israel Samson option. Have you heard of it? So uh, what is the possibility? Yeah, Samson option is like I'll end myself if I'm going to be, I'll end everyone if if I'm going to end in short. Look, it's a far-fetched scenario. Uh, This entity is capable of doing some massive crimes, undeniably. But what people need to understand is there are people at the top who would want to survive. There are people at the top who are implementing every single option to kill their own people in Israel. Imagine if anyone had an ounce of reasonableness, right? An ounce of logic. Let's say, and I gave this example before and I'll give it again. Let's say you're Israel and you only care about Israelis and you don't care about the Palestinians and you view them as lower human beings and you're the enlightened one, you're more superior to them. That's their belief. Many of them, if not the majority. We are God's chosen people. The others are goyim, others subject to us and to serve us because God chose us. Let's say you view it that way. Well, according to this philosophy, some of God's chosen people were kidnapped by uh, these, uh, whatever you call them, right? The human animals, Gallant called the people of Gaza. What is the first thing you do? You get God's chosen people back. Or how you call them, of course, because some people don't understand my sarcasm, I'm sorry. Some people thought that I was serious about the Saudi Arabia video. (laughs) can't believe you're defending them (laughs) even though I clarified in the video but hey what can we do so you would obviously do everything you can to get the Israelis back they did the opposite they started killing them they started targeting them they started indiscriminately bombing with their heaviest heaviest bombs with their air force the satanic air force everything in Gaza They killed over 50 Israelis in the first month, those who were kidnapped. So you don't care about the people. So you already sacrificed your people. And of course, what you've done with with the other parts on the 7th of October, apart from when they were kidnapped and in Gaza, the first person that revealed it was Yochavid Lifshit, the Israeli who was released on a humanitarian basis from Hamas that Israel didn't want to accept, by the way. In the beginning of the war, Hamas told them, we want to release two Israelis on humanitarian purposes because they're ill and we don't want to keep them, we want to bring them back home. Israel said no. Israel said no. How did they release them? They called Egypt. They told them, we're bringing you two Israelis, send them back to Israel. They're in ill health and we don't want to have them, we don't want to have the responsibility of them dying. Then she went back to Israel. Then she started revealing everything. Oh, they treated me nicely. They were kind. They took care of me. They gave me medicine. They took care of my hygiene and feminine hygiene and what have you. And Israel was bombing us all along the way. Look, look through. And then they tried to spin it. They're miserable, these people. They tried to spin it immediately. And she shook hands with Al-Qassam brigades. She went back to shake his hands, to shake the... uh, uh, Hamas members has Al-Qassam brigades with, with his gun and saying shalom, bye. Why would you do that to someone who was supposedly 
doing what Israel is saying did to you. Clearly, they were very kind and compassionate with you because they knew they were on a mission and they're people who have morals, unlike the genocidal satanic death cult. Child killing forces. That's, uh, th th that's what happened. So they don't care and they're implementing it de facto. Marvin Vergus, uh, any info about the Freedom Fortilla? Is it real? When expected to come to Gaza, why aren't there UN, Turkey, Russian hospital ships, coast to Gaza to help Palestinians? What nations uh, give security? I'm not sure they call it the Freedom Fortilla because that was the name that, that was given to them in 2009 when Israel attacked them back then. To break the blockade, there was a wave of ships going. But anything trying to get to Gaza through the sea will have to be approved by Israel. And if Turkey is involved in any way, shape or form, they will refuse it because they already told them we will refuse you dropping aid, airdropped aid, because of their statements against Israel. Erdogan particularly. And that same response applies to the second part of your question where you, you said, why aren't there UN Turkey hospitals ships off the coast of Gaza? Because to be fair, all of this off the coast of Gaza, it doesn't make any logistical sense whatsoever. And it was probably made for other purposes, clearly, because all of this time you have the land routes already filled with trucks to go in, Israel's banning them. And what we were saying at the time is, instead of dropping aid by the air and coming through the sea, approved by Israel, giving small bits and bobs that, uh, that are hardly enough for five or 10% of the people, you have a culprit, you have a criminal. You have a genocidal entity, put your pressure on them. Do you understand the argument? They are willing to use force. They are using force. They're using their military. They're using their intelligence. They're using their resources. They're engaging in violence, but for the sake of Israel. This is what they're doing. The US, Britain, some of the EU countries, actively participating, engaging in violence in their warships, their whatever it is, to support them. But violence is prohibited on the other side. Talk about halal and haram. Halal for Israel, haram on the Palestinian. That's what it is, according to that logic. Um, Shannon, what would happen if Qatar stopped being moderator, mediator? Uh, sorry, moderator of seeing moderators here. Welcome to the moderators, I'm sorry. It sounds like they are questioning this role. I don't blame them, must be so frustrating. Well, it, it was clear by the uh, prime minister, foreign minister. He said that a politician is being unreasonable and is acting out of his own interest. Benjamin Netanyahu, obviously. And all of this is, like I said in, in that other video, is that's an act coordinated by Benjamin Netanyahu and his close allies to prolong this as much as possible. How do you uh, prolong it? By hindering and delaying and canceling. I mean, 
forget about Qatar. Let's talk about the Israeli negotiating delegation. Let's put Qatar on the side and let you, you just understand what Netanyahu is doing with the Israeli delegation headed by the Mossad head. Okay. Firstly, he bans him previously from negotiating. Secondly, he doesn't give him authority to speak with certain people. Thirdly, he restricts him from certain actions. Fourth, he orders him not to reach a deal. Five, he sends people to monitor him and what he does. That all of that, all of these things are unprecedented, by the way. Unprecedented completely. It's as if you okay, it's condescending. How are you going to do that to a person in this position? Do you not trust them? The, he reports to your office directly. All of that is to delay the process. All of that. And then he puts, they blamed him, apart from these things, the negotiating delegation blamed Netanyahu for putting impossible conditions. Impossible conditions. Then when whenever you try and reach a deal and there's a formula that both parties can agree on, all of a sudden Netanyahu comes and adds another condition. Why does he do that? He does that to make it impossible to reach a deal. Same with Qatar. So if he's doing that with his own delegating team, negotiation delegation, the Israeli one, they're supposed to be formed from some of the most professional people in the field, right? He, of course, he's going to do that with Qatar to delay it even further. And there were mass protests in Israel two, three weeks ago when there was a leaked report that the head of the Mossad and the head of the Shabak agreed on a deal. So the delegation agreed, but Netanyahu objected. They were like, okay, you're, you're, you're killing the Israelis then. This is what the Israeli population, many of them are saying. But obviously they're split. Some people want this to continue forever. Guy Lynch, what are the elections like in Gaza and the West Bank? Well, they only happen truly once in both places when Hamas won the elections. And then you had uh, Fatah challenging them and wanting more key positions and then fighting broke out and then Hamas controlled Gaza and the Fatah movement controlled uh, the West Bank. But even when you say about Fatah movement, this split in so many directions, really there's an armed wing in Gaza operating with Hamas in the West Bank even that are not aligned with the PA. And then obviously you had this ongoing split between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority of the West Bank. So there were no genuine elections uh, in that uh, time frame, really. And the last ones were genuine, full ones were in 2006. Kirk, thank you so much for your super brother. And everyone else. John, Khaled, Jihad, everyone. I'm sorry if I missed anyone for your supers. I really appreciate that. Let's see if we have anything else here. Oh, that's interesting. Keith Mitchell. Is it so that under UN Article 51, Iran can legally make a preemptive defensive strike on the bases and facilities that will be used for the proposed attack by Israel? I'm not sure if it's the same article, but you definitely have that option. However, with regards to preemptive strikes, they're not restricted to uh, a country only wanting to attack you, but acting in a reckless manner. Okay, there's more to it. Israel's behaving recklessly. And by international law, but that's, again, international law is ink on paper, abused by the powerful, implemented on the weak, or the less powerful, so to speak, so we don't say weak. Uh, but what Iran did with the strike, and that, that's why it was so sharp, and that's why Israel's is not getting a backing from the U.S. and other countries, it was perfectly executed. 
from a military perspective, from a political perspective, from a judicial perspective, they covered their backs completely to not attract any. So why is it the case that almost all Western leaders are telling Israel don't attack Iran? Why is that the case? Obviously, they have their vulnerabilities. They know what Iran is capable of. Secondly, they know the score legally as well. And they don't want Israel to be completely eliminated. You see, Western leaders are on a more aggressive mission than Israeli leaders themselves to save Israel and its image. They don't want them to do this so that they don't reach a level where they're seen as an untenable entity. And they are, and they have always been. But now it's so, so clear to everyone, it's obvious. And that's what frustrated Western powers and, and their leadership. They wanted them to keep everything under the rug. You know what I mean? This is what they want to do. Excessive force subbed a few days ago. Thank you for your insight. Thank you. Uh, do you think Israel will occupy guys after this is over? I don't think they're able to. If they haven't been able to occupy it with six months of, of so much bombardment and force, I don't think they will, will be able to completely occupy Gaza. Okay, I'll take this as the last question. It's a little bit um, relates to... What's it called? Where were we? Oh, that's from Talal Mansour. It's rela it relates to the, uh, Turkey and um, Kurdistan. How do you see the Turkish problem with the Kurds given the regional situation? Would you engage in a full-scale war with the Kurdish region, aka Iraq? Iran? Look, number one, the, divi the division of the maps and countries that was made by the British Empire and the French, they deliberately did all of this to instill conflicts and make them long-lasting conflicts so that they can sit and watch. Palestine, Kurdistan, Kashmir, all of these areas. They deliberately drew these maps, but you didn't have such maps before. And if, if you're drawing a map genuinely from a, from a goodwill, right, but they, <laughs> their will wasn't good, you would consider the ethnicities, the backgrounds, the historical context, the people, the tribes, what they, like Kurdistan, right? They split them into three, four different countries. Yeah, Kurdistan, Iraq, Kurdistan, Turkey, to Kurdistan in Iran. There, there were one people, you know, generally, although mo mo all of them, if not most, most of them are, are Muslims, right? And many of them speak Arabic too. So that didn't take anything because that's why they wanted to keep this problem going so that Iraq can have problems with the uh, Kurds in Iraq, so that Turkey can have problems with the Kurds in Turkey and with Iran and Syria, excuse me. So all of that was done deliberately, it was very well calculated and evil act to continuously instill conflicts in the region the same way they planted this zionist supremacist entity in the middle east on the land of palestine same same powers so I, but i don't see a war go it doesn't look like there's any war going on the situation is pretty settled at the moment i mean they still have a problem with syria because they supported them heavily in syria against turkey and against everyone really that's the thing when they support a group of people they don't support them for their own interests people need to understand that they support them to make them a bit more powerful to keep that country that they don't like busy whether it's syria or uh, iran or iraq or turkey 
But I don't think that uh, I, I don't think we're expecting to see uh, something very big uh, happening. And we'll wrap it there. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be with you hopefully tomorrow again. Uh, again, if you don't see a notification like today, it will most likely be published later on this evening. Thank you so much for your participation. I enjoyed my time with you. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week ahead, and I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you so much.